Uh, cool. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, the community call this week. Um, we've got some some good stuff to chat about. Um, awesome. Um, cool. Thanks very much for being here. Um, yeah, there's uh, some great stuff to talk about today. No RFCs, but there is a bit of a meta conversation we can have about those. Um, so we'll we'll probably wrap up with that. Um, but I just wanted to remind everyone that, uh, one, we do this call every week. Um, so you're totally welcome to come get involved in the discussions about Astro. Uh, two, we have been doing our... Uh, Q4 roadmap, so um, I've definitely mentioned this a bunch, don't need to go over it again, but uh, if you're curious what we're all working on, uh, definitely give this a look. Um, a lot of these are well underway at this point, which is great. Um, yeah, last week we were off, it was a bit of a unique week because a uh, Veep conference was happening, which was amazing. Um, there are links here. If you click on these, it'll take you right into, uh, the talk with the timestamp and everything. So if you missed any of these, uh, you are totally welcome to, uh, click on here and check out talks from myself, Ben, Fred, Dan, um, and they're all right here. There's also a tweet on our account. Uh, with those links as well, if you are looking for them elsewhere. Um, so that's super exciting. The Veet team did an amazing job. The Veet Conf team uh, hooking these up with like permalinks. Um, so they're really cool. If you check like 2022 slash replay slash Nate Moore or Be Holmes Dev or Frameworks panel, um, it's really nice. Um, so yeah, that's that's really exciting. Um, I am just checking the chat here as well. Oh, you know what? Is this all? Hey. Uh, hey, Scott. I was just going to say, is this all core people uh, and maintainers? I think it was. Um, that is A-OK. -okay. I'll just keep going. Uh, huge thanks to Juan, uh, made some awesome, uh, PRs lately. Um, there's, uh, some upgrades, uh, Vercel fixes, and this was a big one. Um, <clears throat> so updating the dev server, uh, when you change your TS config or Tailwind, um, is, is really exciting. So that's a great little feature. Um, I also just wanted to call out Matthew and Bjorn. Um, Y'all have been absolutely crushing it on the issues. Uh, in the past month, we have had 194 active PRs, and all but 10 of those have been merged. Uh, and then we have had 206 active issues, 173 of them have been closed, and 33 of them are new. So that is absolutely wild. Um, that is a lot <laughs> of activity. And uh, that's just in the past month. So amazing job. Keep up the great work. Um, keeping those issues down. <laughs> Scott, please don't leave. Then it would just be like an internal meeting. Uh, and that would be no fun. <laughs> uh, great to have you here. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, cool. Yeah, I wanted to, uh, shout out that, uh, Vercel released this really interesting thing called Satori, um, that is built for, like, open graph images. So I feel like this is a really awesome solution that, um, really opens things up up for us. I've been looking at this a lot. Um so I definitely think there's some some very cool stuff we can do here um to bring like astro 
into uh, open graph images. So uh, I'm really excited to play around with this. I just wanted to flag it as a cool thing happening in the ecosystem. Um, it's really wild under the hood. I don't know if anybody else has looked at it, but uh, it uses React and Flex. Uh, what is that thing called? Yoga, which is like a React native Flex box implementation. Um, and then it renders all of this. Basically, it takes your markup, renders it to an SVG, which is totally wild. So it takes your HTML, your CSS, turns it into an SVG, uh, like pure image. And then you can run it through this thing called re-SVG, which is implemented with WebAssembly. And you can output a PNG from that. Uh, yes, you can absolutely render open graph images from live data, Ben. Um, they're like fully reactive. Yeah, it's, it's wild. I just saw a demo integrating this with like React 3 Fiber to render things with like an SVG in, uh, like the React 3 scene. It's, it's really crazy. Yeah, you can generate thumbnails, like pure SVGs, PNGs, all this cool stuff. So I'm really excited about this, especially where um, it comes into Astro and, and having like a built-in open graph thing. Um, I won't plug my own library, but I've been working on some stuff related to this. So you can just pass in like plain HTML. Um, so it's very cool. I'm really excited about it. Um... Ah, yes, that's a great question. <laughs> ben with the pun. Um, has anyone done perf testing? Chris asks. Um, I think performance wise, they were comparing it to like starting up a headless browser. So obviously you know, hundreds of times better than the performance of starting a, a Chromium instance and taking a screenshot that way. Um, I think, yeah, it's it's probably less performant than a Canvas API, but you get a lot more flexibility. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a DX thing. And at least we're keeping the JavaScript on the server. Am I right? Um... Cool. I didn't want to steal Peter's thunder, um, but these were just kind of the notes from uh, this week in Astro. Fuzzy, are you around? Do you want to run us through these? I can actually even do one better. I could share you a link or chat that would take you to the slides, and then you'd go to like slides 20. Yeah, where are we? 21 and both. 21. 21 to 40. Wow. He came prepared. Um, this is amazing. So yeah, after 1.5. Uh, you get re latest releases. Yeah, it might not <laughs> work properly. Um in Max. But yeah, some of these slides do work. You get, like you were saying, the ad adapter adds up um NPM. Basically, you get support for running preview servers with your adapters now, and this has been rolled out to Node.js at the present moment, but more adapter support will be coming. Um, the next... I yeah, this is this is a really cool one um, because it, you know, you know how right now you have a separate um, uh, preview command, so you're usually running like Vercel or <laughs> Netlify dev or whatever. Um, this opens the possibility, it's not totally implemented yet, but the possibility of uh, just running npm run preview and it should handle that for you. So that's really cool. And then these are um, just talking about the implementations. Nice. Yeah, so it's just implemented for the node one right now. Ooh, API and, endpoint stuff. Yeah, so the context API has been upgraded as well. Well, that's got a couple of new stuff to bring it more in line with the Astro Globals. Right. Um, 
Yeah, so we have a full API context type. Um, these are much closer to um, the Astro global, so you could basically call this Astro, <laughs> <laughs> and it would feel it would feel very familiar. That, one, that one's cool there because you can do the props. That's a new feature that was added here. That you know here oh. we're using static paths in an, in an API route and getting the props from it, which is cool. Nice. I totally missed that. That is really exciting. Context.request, client address if supported. Um, yeah, there's definitely check out the docs on this. Um, yeah, redirect is on there now. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them, I think. URL, which was not there before. Uh, even generator, <laughs> which is kind of weird <laughs> for the... Uh, yeah, well, but why not? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, you could do like an X powered by header or something. It's true. Yeah. Um. Yeah, very cool. Uh, and the docs are all up to date. Ooh, this was a sweet one, Erica. Do you want to chat about the uh, TypeScript support for Astro Add? There's Assuming. even a wee video next though for it. Ooh. Yeah, I went all out on this one, but oh my gosh, you sure did. It took me a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Nice. So yeah, it'll it'll even update your your TS config file. Um, nice. Really good. <laughs> um. Yeah, that one is awesome. Uh. So it should uh, get you going with your TypeScript. Yes, let's get yield round of round dog of flies. <laughs> you can do a round of applause. You could if you uh, press C. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, yes, amazing work with these uh, fuzzy. This is so so cool. I love all these graphics you found. Uh, Astro redirect, yeah, you can pass a, a status code now, which is really exciting uh, for performance, uh, or sorry, uh, permanent or temporary redirects. Uh, you have full control now in Astro redirect. So that's really cool. Ooh, new build config. Do I even know what this is about? Oh, oh this That's is pretty right. low. This is pretty low level. Uh, essentially, this allows adapters to split out like where their client stuff lives and where uh, the server code. I think like Vercel does this. Um, so it's already yes. existed, but it was like it was a um, it was an adapt or not even an adapter. It was an integration API. Um, it wasn't inside the config itself. So I moved it when we when they did the. Uh, Astral preview change because preview needs this information as well. So it's, it's not something users will very often need to change, if ever, but uh, it, it's there. Nice. Uh, I had to mute because my dog was screaming. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Tailwind and TypeScript have, have a, a watch file support now, which is really cool. So their configurations. This, this is Juan, by the way, who's on the call. Yeah. Woo. Great job, Juan. Uh, material UI support landed. Fuzzy, I feel terrible because you put all this amazing work in and I'm presenting it. No, by all means, go for it. I'm loving this. <laughs> I think this should be the new format. I just make up the slides, right? These guys just chat about your work. That should be it. <laughs> I honestly think that that would be pretty fun. Um, maybe we roll this week in Astro in here. Um, but yeah, this is this is super cool. Uh, Material UI is out of the box. We just updated some configs uh, so that you can use this. Yeah, dealing with Vite's uh, SSR config is never fun. So we try and get that uh, sorted out. Ooh, is there a code sample for this one? Yep. 
Nice. Uh, yeah, this one is is really exciting. I know Matthew uh, added this a while ago, and then there was a bug in Preact, so it didn't work. But uh, now it is here. You can pass in a signal as a prop, uh, which is really cool, and it'll actually uh, work on the client. So that one is sweet. Yeah, so people not familiar with that, it basically... That that count is going to be the same between the components and the client as well. If you increment the count in one of them, they both will share that same state, which is very cool. That is really right. cool. Yeah, um, this would make total sense with like, I don't know, the new Astro Cookie API to set your dark mode and light mode or something like your theme. Uh, that would be a super powerful combo. Is this a, the only place where like a front matter variable kind of exists on the client? This is so weird to look at. Not well, the only not place. The... No, if that the... was if, if that was a zero, like if that was in if that was a string, it would exist. It's so different, right? It's just an object. Yeah, it's just being serialized. I I get what you're saying. It's a little mind bending to think about the data getting passed from the server to the client but like it's already happening <laughs> uh we're serializing and then deserializing values so uh this is just that it just seems weird because it's coming back from a function so i would say this is not the only place where that happens but it does feel a little different for some reason Oh, cool. And yeah, is that it? Um, the Astro? Yeah, there's a little slide next, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Couldn't yeah. miss it. Uh, that's awesome. My VeepConf talk also had a, a SpongeBob reference in it. <laughs> uh, I love it. Also, learned how awesome. to make my own configurable GIFs as well this weekend, which. Ooh, that's super fun. Uh, awesome. Well, thank you for that, Fuzzy. This was really fun. I feel like we should we should chat about doing this again. Yeah, for sure, uh, mate. That was awesome. Nice. Uh, great work on all those uh, updates. Cool. Um, Sarah, I believe I forgot to tag you. Um, here I'm here. She has some docs updates for us. Oh, no, I have to follow that. I have no graphics. All <laughs> I can tell you is that Hacktoberfest is still going strong. And a uh, reminder that one of the things we're super proud of is that we have Hacktoberfest to make sure that you get credit for Doc's reviews in addition to PRs because we love our reviewers. We need the help. We could have used the help last week while Dan was away speaking at React Brussels and Chris was traveling and Sarah was alone in the PR repo, not spending too much time in the PR repo. So your issues and PRs might be moving slowly, but uh, all, all you need is the label. You don't need it merged to count. You just need the label. So I made sure everybody got their labels. Um, Sitting in the repo, there are some, uh, there's some interesting new con content there. I think people will be excited that we are very close to merging a new guide on testing in Astro. It certainly doesn't have everything you're going to want, but there's, uh, there's some stuff there. It's happening because we know that you want to test your Astro code, and that's super exciting. Uh, the thing that we are uh, really working on and uh, what I have opened in, I think, other screens at, as I speak right now is we are going to soft launch our tutorial this week. It's going to get merged. Uh, no longer will I have to look at this one draft PR conversation 239 commits 312. Uh, we are all getting sick of this PR. We'd like to get it merged. 
uh, so that we can, we can really do some more easily focused work on it. Um, and, uh, oh, look at, Dan, did you just file a new content PR 17 minutes ago? Dan, you're killing us. Uh, yeah, this, it, it's been, uh, it's been a bit of uh, it's been a bit of a stressful time in docs, and we're just we're working really hard. Uh, I haven't turned my camera on for any of these meetings because you don't want to see what it looks like in here. Um, but we are super excited, and we are then very soon going to be asking for people to look through the tutorial. Um, I can't stop you. Apparently, Nate's put the put the PR on the screen. You can see what it looks like right now. Um, we are just really excited to get some basic and introductory content out there in addition to the things like testing and uh, the more advanced level concept. So that's hey, what we've been Chris, doing and Chris that's my report. Uh, oh, Chris put it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is amazing. 317 points. That is wild. Uh, very excited. <laughs> Do I sound a little frazzled right now? Because this is where I am. But it's <laughs> exciting. This this is the stuff I love to work on. So uh, yeah, we I I see the chat in one of my many monitors here. Um, so we are excited to share that with you eventually. And uh, Chris and Dan have been uh, they, back to work on Monday, and we have been working nonstop on this. So that's our docs update. That is amazing. I'm super excited for this. Uh, definitely uh, can't wait to try it out. Maybe I'll learn something new about Astro too. Awesome. Uh, cool. Like I said, uh, we don't have tons of RFCs this week, but I did want to give an update on... Last week, um, or last time we met, we had an RFC that I proposed about, uh, you know, enabling Vue users to do app.use. Um, and we kind of decided after chatting about it, um, this was a lot. It was <laughs> probably too much of an abstraction for the use case. Um, so I withdrew the RFC. Um, at the same time, um, we were able to just go ahead and do this. So in this PR, um, we added basically what was proposed in that RFC, an app entry point uh, to the AstroJS slash view integration. So the next time a release goes out, Oh, let's see. Did it already happen? Uh, I think it already happened. Uh, yeah, wait, I just literally... pressed it a few, min a few minutes hey. ago. <laughs> I was like, wait, three minutes? Uh, that literally just <laughs> happened. Amazing. So, yeah, uh, coming in the next uh, release of the view integration is port for an app entry point. Super exciting. It's already out uh, according to the announcements channel. Hey, that's awesome. Yeah, I love that we don't even check CI anymore. We just check for an announcement. Uh, <laughs> let's see, what else What else went out uh, for sale? Juan's contributions there. Uh, a whole bunch of... <laughs> yeah, Peter, do you have slides for these yet? Um... <laughs> Um, yeah, whole, can we call a whole bunch of changes? All right. Um, I just want to uh, bring some attention to, I don't think, I'm not even sure if they're in the Discord, but Airborne04 here. Um, they have been, they've done several pretty good sized contributions in the last couple months or so. Um, nice. A lot of, a lot related to the Cloudflare adapter. I think they're using Cloudflare adapter, but they also, started poking around uh with with some other kind of core stuff that they've noticed so done and they're they're working on some prs right now so good nice. stuff coming from uh airborne zero four that 
That's amazing. Uh, yeah, we should definitely uh, recognize them more. I think I see quite a few uh, n new names here. Um, so love to see more contributions. Awesome. Um, yeah, there was kind of a meta RFC. I don't know what to call this. Um, I think this is really minor, <laughs> and it's not going to take half an hour uh, to talk about. <laughs> but Matthew, do you want to introduce this? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is the template for an RFC. Um, so when you create an RFC, uh, what you do is there's this template here. You basically just copy and paste this into a new file and fill out the sections. Um, and the sections are, is that all the sections? No, it's a yeah. kind of, it starts with, starts with a summary. Uh, there's an example. There is, what else we got? Motivation, detail design. Um, and then currently there's drawbacks and uh, it was, what's the other one? Um, alternatives. Uh, alter so alternatives, job strategy. So there's each section that you fill out that uh, kind of breaking down, uh, you know, pros and cons essentially. And, and as well, how it's actually going to be implemented. So what I what I was wanting to do here is um, actually I was thinking about an, an upcoming RFC we were discussing. Um, and I was thinking like, oh, I'd really love I'd really love this RFC to like explain all the test cases uh, that they plan on implementing it because it's kind of a complex feature. Uh, so I was like, yeah, maybe that should actually be part of the the template. Is like you actually explain. Hey, this feature is going to be tested this way. This feature, you know, depends on, uh, you know, it's a CLI related, so we really need integration tests for that. Um, or, you know, or this is very small and unit testable, like astro.cookies was very unit testable. Um, and then additionally, like, what are kind of the test cases that you would expect to come out of this? Uh, so depending on the feature, um, it might have a very small set of test cases, or it might be a big test, big, uh, big set. So, I'm just kind of breaking down, like what, what just overall, what are the testing strategies uh, related to this? Uh, just as the, you know, Astro code base has grown, we have so many features now, and we have so many options, and that just creates a very like large matrix of possible things that could you know, collide with each other and mess each other up. Um, and so testing is like, you know, becomes more and more important as the bigger the Astro gets. And I thought it was just time to be like, yeah, yeah, let's make testing like something that's front and center, even even as early as the RFC. It, it doesn't mean that like, if you're like, oh, this thing is completely untestable. It, does, it doesn't mean that we would reject the RFC, but th for sure, like that becomes a part of the consideration, I think. Yeah, but that that's the idea. And the other thing is just, it. I think, Anytime you start thinking about testing, it makes you think about corner cases and stuff like that. And it, that helps the overall RFCs. You're like, you know, you think about, oh, I need to test this case. Oh, that's kind of a weird corner case. I should probably, you know, maybe that maybe that deserves changing, you know, the API or something. Who knows? Anyways. Yeah, I think I think that's a very good idea. Um I don't feel like uh, we need to <laughs> discuss it too much on here. Um, certainly, if anyone has any objections to talking about testing in the RFC, please let us know. Um, but I think it's it's overall a very good idea. Um, and also fits, uh, Matthew has been doing a lot of refactoring internally in the core code base Um to make sure things are testable and getting more unit testing in, um, which has already led to some some performance improvements and some other other great things. So definitely testing helps all around. <laughs> yes, only testing in production. Um, so yeah, if if you have thoughts. Uh, Leave them on the uh, on the uh, PR here. But I think overall, it's a thumbs up from me, Matthew. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> like one approval, it's it's it. <laughs> um, cool. That <laughs> oh, that's two thumbs up. You are good to go. Second, um... good. <laughs>
Awesome. Uh, yeah, I am not gonna like just vamp here for half an hour. Um, but if there's anything from the community anybody wants to chat about, um, the floor is yours. We can we can talk about anything. One thing I'd point out is, uh, yeah, there have been so many awesome projects people have been sharing in the showcase. Um, definitely check it out. Just really cool, uh, like themes and uh, sweet stuff. Hey, is that Satori? I feel like it might be. Um. So yeah, there's there's some amazing uh sites in here uh people are building such cool stuff and they're using astro for it so that's cool uh robin i'm gonna yes oh, my see. my certificate is not <laughs> like oh wait i know what to do oh oh no no that was me i just need to click proceed Oh no, it's a 404. Okay, that was, I'm sorry, I put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely check stuff in the showcase channel out. Um, cool. There's nothing. I have, I have one thing. Uh, I mean, if, if we're, we're, we're all here now, we can, we can talk yeah. about, about something. Sure thing. Um, let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, maybe I can just tell you the issue number. Um, oh yeah, let me do that. Astro D one oh five. What five one oh five? Five one zero five. That's right. Uh, so the the issue here is uh, this person. Okay, so so some background. If you use import meta dot that grabs from your environment variables. Um, however, it it grabs from your environment variables at build time, I believe, by default. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to have those environment variables on your build server. However, um, and you might know more about this than me, Nate, because I, I didn't realize it did this. I think if it can't find the environment variables at build time, it, it keeps the code in there uh, so that you can find them at runtime. Essentially, it converts foo to process.m.foo. So when you run your server, you can have your environment, you can have your foo environment variable on your actual production server and it will work. And that that's that's really good. Uh, however, if you're deploying to like deno, for example, there is no process.m.foo. That does not exist. Um, there's a different API for, for getting environment variables in, in in Deno, so there's a lot of discussion here. But one one of our ideas that uh, Bjorn and I were kind of talking about here was maybe there could be an API for adapters to like tap into. Um, so you essentially oh. what 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 the um, what do you call that the the inf we have an inf, inf plugin that that kind of does all this. Yep. Um, and so the idea is like maybe an adapter could plug into this, and instead of instead of um, Compiling to process.m.foo, the deno adapter, for example, would process would would compile to. I'm not even sure what it is. <laughs> I think it's deno. Env.get or something. It was right in here. Oh, I think it's in so, here. It is. M.get. Yeah, it would compile to that instead. Um, yeah, my my last comment has an an idea for this, uh, but essentially it's just that it's like uh, I think build.env key. Can bike shit on the name, but uh, just a function, and the the like you know presumably the adapter it would just be part of the 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 config object, but presumably the adapter would would hook into this and and kind of do that part. So yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, so that's the idea. Cool. Yeah, I forgot that that was a thing <laughs> that we were doing, and I think I think we were probably doing that prior to. SSR and adapters and all this stuff. Um, and we've probably never circled back to make sure it was uh, handled properly. Yeah. 
I might buy up a quick RFC for this, actually. I was I was uh I was thinking it's small enough, maybe you don't need one, but you know, I don't know. I could see where like I don't know, maybe that you actually need to turn the source map, I guess, to actually make it source map correctly. I don't know. Um could could see that, but yeah, I'll write up a quick RFC for this. Cool. So this is really similar to um a situation I run into we've hit with the image integration. Like we really it'd be nice if we could call platform specific file APIs, right? So not just node APIs, but actually get like uh some kind of generic wrapper from Astro or maybe in the app, the SSR app that we build or, you know, somewhere in the same kind of use where we could just say like a write file instead of having to import it from node and do all that kind of dance. Yeah. There's a lot of like similar issues to this. Mm -hmm. um, that That's one. And the other one is, it's actually more related to what you're talking about. Actually, I think Airborne was in on this issue is uh, Airborne wants to, like, there's, there's, Cloudflare has these different Cloudflare-specific APIs uh, that are like, uh, what are they called? Like the durable objects, I think, is one. Mm -hmm. um, those are all part of the EMV somehow, which is kind of weird to me, but they're all part of the EMV. I mean, there's not a good way to, like, yeah, he, he, this is where uh, Airborne's talking about it. There's no good way to like get those features like that are kind of adapter specific APIs. Um, right. It's kind of a similar. It's similar. Um, I think the environment variable use case is like that's a pretty small use case that we can kind of fix. But yeah, there is like a larger, a uh, you know, a larger problem of platform differences just in general. Like, how do we resolve that? Totally. Um... Yeah, it feels like uh, there's kind of two arguments there. I feel like we can uh, <laughs> take a step back and try and, you know, solve every possible use case for environment stuff, uh, which obviously would take a long time and be really complicated. Um, or we can just kind of fix these small issues as they come up. I think there's arguments for both. Um, but like this env key thing seems good <laughs> as like uh, an improvement over what we have right now, which is kind of broken. So that's um, I would definitely that, be in favor of an RFC here. Uh, um, Airborne was working on that like that durable objects idea, and that's one thing I think is really powerful about how powerful our integrations are is that. They don't have to wait for some generic solution to Astro. Like they can just add that to the Cloudflare adapter, right? Because it's it's a Cloudflare concept. You just add an API that you know gets the whatever it's called uh, durable objects. Um, and the same way that you last week, right? Is you didn't you were able to uh, fix that view issue just by updating view and didn't really need core changes. So I'm I'm really happy about the fact that our integrations like have a lot of hooks we 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 need to add more but they have a lot of hooks to like you know work around their kind of differences yeah totally um it is it is really powerful um this combo of vt and uh virtual modules kind of solved the problem uh for the view thing and yeah there's a lot of cool stuff you can do just with an integration Awesome. Yeah, uh, thank you, Matthew, for bringing that up. I feel like I'd love to chat about an RFC here. It does feel pretty small. You could probably get through it pretty quickly. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and write that up right now, and we can talk about it uh, right now. I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> like, Sweet, you have 14 minutes. <laughs> Let's go. Awesome. Um, yeah, are there any other... I know we had, like uh needs discussion i don't know if we've checked in on that in a while no there are zero i think we don't need... think we've stopped using that label quite a while okay. ago well that would do it as well um yeah. <laughs> cool yeah um i mean just to see the issue count uh be down so low is amazing 
Well, there's there is one. Let's let's just let's do one more. Uh, because someone had a PR for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think Fred is on the call, is he? Because he he might know the answer to this. But um, there is an issue. Fifty ninety one. So the issue is that uh, yes. when you use Astro Glob, and if there are no results, like if you go to a folder that's an empty folder, uh, it throws. When it tells you like, "Hey, there's nothing here," um, and someone actually submitted a PR to fix this to change it to not throw. Um, and I, I have been unsure of whether we should we should urge it because I don't know. It just seems like going from not throwing to, or excuse me, from throwing to not throwing uh, is. I don't know. <laughs> so, like, there's a reason we were throwing. So I didn't know if anyone had context for how do we throw when there are no matches. Totally. Yeah, I think the idea was it's unex. Like, you probably made a mistake <laughs> because yeah. you you pro you want content back. Um, but yeah, yeah it's I not. Totally it's not. See for advanced use cases not dynamic is right it's not like it's not like you have a folder that's empty sometimes but sometimes it's got stuff in it i wouldn't think right it's it's like you're globbing for your content folder or your docs folder or your your blog post folder which are you doing that if there are no blog posts so right it makes okay the current behavior makes sense in that in that case i think i think so um, I think the idea really is like catch accidental typos, like you're trying to glob for your blog and you spell the directory name, throwing right. the error there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally, that makes sense. Um. Yeah. So yeah I, I guess I'm wondering what the use case of right. I want yeah. an empty array is, <laughs> other than that's what I expect. It, it, I could see I could see this happening where like if you're building your site for the first time like you're working on page and you don't have any posts yet because you haven't written any um, and that might be like oh uh, this is unexpected for this to throw I can't I can't design my page because there's no post in there um, you know what I mean like uh, I could see that you run into it in that case but you know just add an empty error there I guess. Quick question on that error, error you brought up. Um, there's no guarantee that not be able to find a file. The error it gives out is because the file doesn't exist, or something like that. It could be that your specific use case just doesn't currently work the way the file should be. Um, in my mind, having an empty array just sort of makes sense because you're not you're not using Astro Glob as an abstraction away from the normal file system. If you wanted that error, if you use normal file system, or if you just wanted they're reliable here. Here are the files you want. Here are the files if they exist. Here are the files they don't exist. I think just having it given an array would be a bit more expected. Okay. Let's say you, you change a, you remove a file from a folder and you keep that folder for future use or you're um, archiving um, a specific. I'm thinking of a specific use case. Maybe maybe um, this problem is like very very niche. It might be what I'm imagining is a use case where you're moving a file from a folder, but you still want that folder to be there for archive purposes. But um, I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. Stromo brought up that that's the use case I was thinking of. Is that if you're uh, he he said he was he ran into this when setting up a new blog, but it didn't didn't have any post. That's that's exactly where I would think that this would be unexpected. Is that you're you're just starting building your blog, but you haven't written anything yet, so I understand. Yeah, that I feel sure. like I feel like a non breaking change would be not throwing on empty directories. Is there a way we could add an exist sync call when we run it? And if it doesn't exist, then throw, but if it does, then just return empty array. Because that doesn't seem breaking to me. Yeah, that that yeah, I would have to agree with Ben on this one. Yeah. Having uh, property I... Or airing out if you really want that. Sounds nice. Yeah, I don't know uh, if this is br- a breaking change. 
I guess it is, but it's it's like a dev time problem, right? I mean, if it returns empty array when there's no directory, yeah, that that seems breaking to me. Or that seems unexpected, I guess, is what I'm going after. Well, yeah, I think Chris said yeah. something like, "What if your if your glob is mistyped or you're like one level off, like the directory exists, but there's no markdown files," which is seems like of... there is good in that case. You got a glob That's... in order to know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I suggested exist, and that wouldn't work. You got yeah, I find the error helpful in those circumstances. Cause yeah, like, it is. You're like, really I'm helpful. looking for the folder. Why can't I find the folder? And if it was just giving me empty, like I might not notice it. Or you only notice it when you get to the browser. Like, yeah. Yeah. Catch that earlier. Yeah. Does Robert turn error types? Is... <laughs> we can. Uh, we could. We could also just one. have it be um the option like this. You opt into this behavior. Yeah, but so, I was going like to say, that. I feel like an option is is obviously it's one route we could this... go down, but then you're, you're like, why would you ever opt into that? <laughs> if you, if all the examples don't have it, like... Yeah, you're just opting in for a different dev experience, and I've never used options just for that. Yeah, or if you do opt in because you just yeah. set up an empty blog, you'll forget about it and never turn that off. Yeah, exactly. That's what I would and do. And then you'll still have accidental empty arrays. Man. I assume you can try catch this, right? Like if you, you try can, yeah. if you yeah, that's, that's you can. Around. can. I'm wondering if there's error types like, to know. Like it is. Yeah. yeah, does Glob give you a special error to know? Like, oh, the problem was no directory, or the problem was none of the file type. I don't. I'd have to look. I have no idea. But yeah, if, if, if it I... gave those, yeah, that would be very useful. Like missing directories, that would definitely be, you know. Well, I mean, it's the error object that it gives back. If it has types, then we're good. But we're relying on V. No, oh, yeah, just don't have you know what? throws a plain error. Yeah, I think we've. I think we've. We have enough to know that this is a contentious <laughs> issue. Uh, so yeah. I don't think we should change it currently. Uh, yeah, if you would like for it to not throw, then I think there's probably uh, an RFC warranted. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, had a bit of both. And this this is definitely not a bug fix. This is a feature, best. Um, yeah. What if we had both? Though? What if we actually like tell people that your directory you're looking at just doesn't exist, or there's something wrong with the directory, or there's no um, uh, markdown. The glob just would never work in this directory. Astro so says no. Uh, I think the concern is that <laughs> errors, like warnings, are too easy to ignore. Warnings are easy. Which is why we didn't do it as a way. Yeah, I'm used to ignoring so many source map issues that I can see it. Hey, that should have been fixed. Hey. <laughs> the most recent one, at least. I'll pull is it that, It wasn't yesterday. Is that um, because they're giving bad warnings? Because that seems like just a general, like, if you're ignoring warnings because they provide no value to you, then you're not doing something. I'm right sorry. I retract my comment. I just meant that warnings are easier to ignore. Yeah. Well, I will double up on your comment for you, Ben, because I, I often have a console running behind my VS Code screen and then never see warnings as they go. Well, v um, gives a bunch yeah. of warnings, and I I I, I usually I I've, I've recently started actually following those warnings, and I found some benefit <laughs> to them. So I'm just like, maybe oh, it's like, yeah. <laughs> or maybe or maybe we could have it be like a switch. Um, switch of an error, and it'll warn at you if you're if the first time you already expected it. No. I generally I mean, think you still know about it. Sorry, I generally think that this falls under a broad scope of just better error handling through Astro where we can. Um presently speaking better descriptions to explain the error, perhaps. Um did it throw? Yes. If it's mm -hmm. If it's coming up against the user's expectations, then we should re we should be able to feed that back to them what they're doing wrong and how to surface it in a way that is a wee bit more understandable. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, we certainly just because there's four minutes left doesn't mean we need to continue talking about this for four more minutes. Um, I think that that's totally true, Fuzzy. Um, we might be able to improve the error message here. Um, it seems like 
yeah, this is a contentious one because people just have different expectations. Um, but it's also a pretty small corner case. Cool. Um, I have this relevant GIF uh, ready to go. <laughs> to keep track of that. Uh, great. Um, cool. Thank you, everybody. Uh, this was really great. Thanks, Matthew, for uh, throwing some issues uh, to chat about in here. Um, genuinely really cool. I think a lot of these are... Uh, not obvious issues and there's a lot of historical context so talking about them in a group setting like this can be really valuable awesome uh yeah let's let's call it there y'all uh thank you so much for joining this week and uh and shop stop uh share my screen here oh yeah we got the new the new emoji reactions, which are so fun. I love that you can do, uh, if you have Nitro, you can get uh, <laughs> really ridiculous with the animations, which is just good. I just love that you get the full custom emojis. Super fun. I need to get Nitro. Honestly, Nate, I wait for you to react to things so I can have better reactions. <laughs> Give me the think spin. I want the Mario dance, <laughs> but I can't have it. I might bite the bullet. Oh, so sad. I'll get it expensed. Oh, sad. Is, is Discord actually, how much is Discord actually benefiting from that for Nitro? That, that's my interest. How, how many people actually end up getting Nitro? I don't know. I mean, so we like, have 14, we have 14 boosts on the server, so thank you all for is that. A month? <laughs> Is that a monthly yeah. thing, by the way? That's Nitro. Um, you can do it yearly, but yeah, it's a, a monthly thing, I think. But I think you pay for it over a year. I don't really remember. I don't think about it now. I just like the Mario Luigi dance, so. <laughs> um, also, there's these new activity things, which seem really fun. So I'm excited to try that out. We have, like, way too many people right now. Um, but... Maybe another time uh, we can try one of these activities. Woo. All right. Thanks, y'all. Feel free to hang out. Uh, thanks for being here, as always. Catch you next week. Stay. Thanks, everyone.